Good morning. In the previous class, we had discussed about writing skills, and in that writing skills, we had talked about how can a good writing be achieved, or how can you make your writing a good one. In the same line, we also discussed about free writing and guided composition. Both were discussed in the class to just rewind about it or to just recall about it. I'll just tell you something more about guided and free composition. When we talk of writing, there are basically two kinds of writing that occurs in a classroom. That is, one is guided composition, another is free composition. Guided composition means in which the teacher is guiding you and the teacher is guiding you through various means by, for example, the teacher may give you a guideline for the essay and then ask you to write an essay about it or the teacher may give you something to read and then ask you to develop it into your own words. So when the guidance or the instruction is provided by the teacher, it is said to be guided composition because under the guidance of the teacher, you are making that composition as per the guidelines provided by the reading of the passage or the reading of the article or by the instructions given by the teacher. That is why it is said to be guided composition. Next we say is free composition. In free composition, you get a topic and through that topic, you have to develop your own ideas and then write a paragraph or an essay about it. Now in this, you do not get any kind of guidelines. There is a topic and that is a free topic in which you are not given any kind of guidelines. So that kind of composition wherein you are meant not getting any guidelines and the topic is given to you, it is said to be free composition. Both has its advantages and disadvantages. The advantage part in the guided composition is that there is a guideline and the students they write based on that guideline. But the second school of thought feels that free composition is better because in free composition you are free to use your ideas. You may have an idea about a different topic which may not match with that in a guided composition. But when you are uh, when you are given the chance to express your ideas in free composition, you have that opportunity to present your ideas, and that is why both the school of thoughts they have their own ideologies. Some consider guided composition as a good one. Some feel that free composition is a good one. In the previous class, we had discussed all these things in detail. Today, we are going to talk about effective writing. As you can see, let us speak about what makes the writing effective. The first point that says is, good writing has a clearly defined purpose. Now, what does that, what does that mean? When you are writing, your purpose of writing should be very clearly defined. It should make a definite point. That means it should lead to a conclusion or it should lead to some kind of a specific point which you wish to convey through your writing. Then only your writing would be considered as good writing. It supports that point with specific information. Whatever point you have discussed in your writing, whatever topic you have discussed, you must give some kind of examples to substantiate your writing. To say that this is what I have observed and this is why I specifically talk about this thing. Now you can do this only when you substantiate it with some articles, with some, with some writings or with some kind of examples. That is why I say that your point should be supported with some specific information. The content of the writing should be logically arranged. With that you mean that it should have a beginning, middle and an end. It should have a logical flow. It should flow naturally. 
it should not be abrupt it should not be something that has sprung all of a sudden and the reader while reading it finds that there is a discontinuation from the first topic or from the first para so we say that when you are writing something please consider that it should have a beginning middle and end and it should have a logical flow it should flow logically it should not be something that is abrupt or it should not be something that is disconnected now when you do that you automatically get a feeling that it is logically connected when you write it rewrite it again and again you would find that you will be able to establish that connectivity in your writing and for that you will have to write more and more once a rough draft then a fair and then the final it should be connected it should be a harmonious blend that means it should be connected in a very very logical and a proper manner now when you do that it becomes an essay so we are going to talk about today uh, as how to write a good essay or what are the guidelines to write a good essay the first thing that you should do while writing an essay is define the scope of the essay writing is highly complex it needs effort it needs lot of patience and it needs lot of thinking often we get a topic and we jump to that and we start writing immediately do not do that think about it and define your essay find the scope of your essay what all things you are going to write in your essay because if you start writing your writing would be endless and then we have a word limit certainly so you will not be able to complete in that word limit and you will still feel that there were certain other points which i wanted to define which i wanted to write but i could not write it so the best thing is you define the scope of your essay sit and decide that these all points are there and this is what i am going to define in my essay these all are the things which i want to stress hard these are the points which i want to just touch and go that means i don't want to define these points in elaborate manner but i want to mention these points when you do that it is said to be touch and go so you have to sit down and define the scope of the essay jot down the ideas jot down the ideas means whatever ideas come to your mind while reading the topic jot down those ideas because you will work on those ideas those ideas those thoughts will further help you to write your essay so randomly whatever comes to your mind by looking at the topic just jot it down once you jot it down you will be clear that these are the thoughts that are coming to my mind and these are the lines on which i am going to write my essay so this jotting down of ideas is very very important and you must take care that you jot down any n number of ideas whatever comes to your mind please jot it down write it down and then number it depending upon the idea or depending upon the topic decide which idea you are going to present first which idea you are going to present second which idea you are going to put it as a conclusion now when you do that when you have jot down the ideas it becomes easy for you to number it and when you number it it becomes further easy for you to write it down into paragraphs prepare the outlines that is preparing when you are jotting down the right ideas you are automatically preparing the outlines and while you are preparing the outlines you are developing it 
on the lines which you have thought. Whatever you have jotted down, you are trying to develop it on those lines and then you are going to talk about it in the essay. Now that is becomes a help to you, that becomes a guideline for you and it becomes easier for you to develop those ideas into the outlines and further into paragraphs. Take each point after you have decided that these all are the ideas that I am going to speak about. Define it into different paragraphs. Take one idea in one paragraph. If you mix too many ideas in one paragraph, the reader will be confused. The reader will not be able to get the sense of reading. So you have to think from the perspective of the reader that the reader would be able to understand my point properly only when I write one point and into one paragraph. So develop different ideas into different paragraphs but one point, one paragraph. So depending upon the word limit, you have to certainly work on that and you have to make your ideas in a very uh, concise manner and in a very very emphatic manner and then develop those ideas into paragraphs. Next point we say is think of an attractive beginning. Now beginning and end of an essay are very very important. It is very important that you take care of the beginning of the essay. Often you have seen the writings, often you have seen the seen very good essays. They begin with good quotations. They begin with quotations from the from it could be either from a poem, it could be either from some great man, or it could be just a simple quotation, anonymous one. You don't know who has written that quotation, but it is a popular one. So you quote that and then you begin your essay with. Now this gives an attractive beginning to your essay. For example, if you have been given an essay on honesty, so you can always begin with honesty is the best policy and then continue with your essay or any other quote that comes to your mind that you have read about honesty, you can begin with that and then present your ideas. Similarly, ending of an essay is also very important. How you end it is very very important. I would again refer that the beginning and the end, they should be synchronized. They should be in a continuous blend. It should be a harmonious blend of thought and expression. That is what makes a good essay. When you are writing something in a continuous manner, in a manner that makes some sense, it would be considered as a good writing. So, for that you will have to read. Please do read and take down small small quotations into your notebooks so that you can use it whenever you get an essay topic. You can use it and you can use it in an effective manner either in the beginning part or towards the end. The conclusion has to be stated very clearly and firmly. When we talk of a conclusion, we should be very very clear about it that there has been a problem, you have taken upon a problem, you have given a solution to it and finally you are concluding that. Now it has to be very very objective. When you write objectively, you will have to think before that you will have to think it into a, in a very very object, objective manner. So think objectively and write objectively. The end should be a very very clear end and it should be in line with what you have started. It should be in line with what you have begun. How you began with the first statement in your essay. It should be in line with that and you should clearly state the problem or you should clearly give the conclusion to your problem to the essay that you have stated over there or to the writing that you have given. So we say that the conclusion has to be stated clearly and firmly. Again, language is something that is very very important. Often we get perplexed, we think that we use very, you know, we use jargons, we use the very uh, heavy words, verbose words so that the writing becomes very very good. No, good writing is always a simple one. Please do not make long sentences. Keep your 
sentences short to the point do not take up any such german language or such kind of language which you are not able to understand and you are just trying to make it a flowery one no whatever you say it should have a meaning just unnecessarily speaking about or writing hard writing words that uh, sound beautiful and you don't know the meaning of it it will not be in line with what you have written so take care of the language your language should be simple use the vocabulary that you are familiar with do not try on any vocabulary or any such word the of which the meaning you are not aware of so take care of the vocabulary take care of the language make simple sentences make crisp sentences do not make very long sentences in writing it is always good that you keep your writing short you keep your writing precise you make it to the point and you can do it by using simple language language that is grammatically correct and that makes sense such words that we make use in our normal day to day life and the vocabulary that you are clear with and you know the meaning of that word if you have a rich vocabulary please go ahead make use of the words that you have learned make use of the words that you have uh, come across and you know that by using this word this is the meaning that would be conveyed through my writing if you are able to do that please do that but at the end you should be able to make it very very clear the meaning should come out very very clearly only use such kind of words and for that you need to develop the habit of reading newspapers and periodicals we always say we have been stressing throughout the semester that reading is very very important because it is a food for thought if you don't read you will not be able to write and only writing will help you simply reading you will forget because our mind is something that is it's not a machine it's not something it's not a computer that it will be able to recall everything that you read so in order to feed your mind in order to feed your mind for good writing you will have to read and then you will have to write so read first and for that develop your vocabulary develop a habit of reading newspapers periodicals magazines whatever comes to your mind if you have a habit of reading uh, good fiction go ahead read it but also write it at the same time whatever you have read try and summarize it into your own words write it because only writing will help writing nothing else but writing can help you to write a good essay or a good note so with this i end today's lecture i hope you have understood the points that should be there in making a good essay or the guidelines for writing a good essay take care of these points while you are writing and write and rewrite and then make a fair draft the fair draft would come only after you have written twice or thrice after that only you will get up and after some time you will see that there is a change because you have been writing you have been writing and rewriting you can then write on the topic that is given and at that point your brain or your mind would be synchronized your mind would be able to write or you would be able to um, take the concept and develop it into the ideas and then you can write it very very frequently or you can write it in short time but for that you need great practice and the practice is there only with writing thank you very much if you have any queries any doubts please talk to me tell me i will be happy to answer that thank you